YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here. We another Washington Commanders video. And in today's video, I'm coming on here with a video where we're going to be talking about five Washington Commanders players that disappointed me in the 2022-2023 season. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video about the NFL. Or in this case, I watched the Commanders. We're now on the road to 6,000 subscribers, so please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you so much. Let's get straight into today's video. So, ladies and gentlemen, today is the first official off-season video. Uh, first official off-season day for the Washington Commanders as they had locker room clean out. Um, and there was a lot said in the locker room clean outs today. Uh, one that really stood out was for me with Deron Payne. Uh, his his answers kind of were like nonchalant and like standoffish, and it kind of gave me the vibes that like maybe he doesn't want to be back, or he knows he won't be back, or he just doesn't care that for the Washington Commanders or doesn't care to be back with the team. Um, we'll get into that in the December video, but yeah, today was probably like the first official like off day for the team. Or off season day for the team. So we're now in off season video mode. And the first video I wanted to obviously come and do was five players that disappointed me this year because this season did not go how it should have went. This season we should have we should be getting ready to play probably the 49ers or the Vikings right now. Um to be honest with you guys. And instead we're hitting the road and we're going to Cancun, right? Um and a lot to has to do to coaching. Um during my research for this video, it was kind of tough because it wasn't a lot of players that had terrible years. Um and that kind of translated onto the field and, and you see that in the games like a lot of our games we lost weren't because of players all of the time. It was really a coaching. But they were but with that being said, they, there were some players that definitely did not have the 2022 campaign that I thought they should have had or I thought that they would have had. So let's kick this list off, and um, let's go with the first player. Let's go with Logan Thomas. Logan Thomas definitely disappointed me this year. I thought coming off of, um, obviously, the ACL injury last year, I thought he was going one – I thought he was going to, one, stay healthy, and then, two, um, you know, be a threat for Carson Wentz. You know, we, we always thought talked about, you know, Carson Wentz loving his tight ends, going back to Zach Ertz, and then in Indianapolis with Mo Ali Cox and, 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 and company. He loves his tight ends. Um, and we thought Logan Thomas was going to be that big 6'6 six, six red zone guy that Carson Wentz could throw to, but he just wasn't that. Um Part of that, obviously, is due to coaching, as many players have voiced their opinions about, and even Logan Thomas, his wife, has said something about, about it. But also, part of that is his lack of being able to stay on the field. You know, he was he was injured for some of the parts of the season. He was in and out of the lineup. Um, and then when he played, he really just didn't make an impact. Like, he made a play every, every now and again, you know. But it kind of felt like he impacted the game in a negative way. Now, the tight end group as a whole this this year was was really like empty like it was uh it was kind of like ghost town, but the leader of the pack being Logan Thomas, we thought we could rely on him and he he didn't do anything for us this year. He really didn't. Um and he'll be back next year for sure, but looking back on it, or should I say looking for the future? I'm definitely more excited and more intrigued with Cole Turner and and um, Amani Rogers, and hopefully those guys can get more opportunities next season, whether it's with Scott Turner. Hopefully not, but we all know he's probably going to be here. But I just want to be on an offense where they utilize our tight ends because we have tight ends, including Logan Thomas, that I can go out there and do something. But this year, Logan, he was not good. Um, and again, part of that is due to coaching, but part of that is also due to him being not being healthy. And then when he was out there, just impacting the game in a negative way, you know, penalties, you know, um, and, uh, 
quarterback play also, which isn't his fault, but he he just didn't look good. He didn't look he didn't look like Logan Thomas from 2020. So that's the first player that disappointed me this year. And second player I have for you is Andrew Norwell. Andrew Norwell was not good this year, ladies and gentlemen. And this kind of made me really, really, really miss Eric Flowers because Andrew Norwell could not move. Like, neither could our guards move. Whether it was Andrew uh, Andrew Norwell or Trey Turner, excuse me, neither of the guards could really move. And that made me miss Brandon Sheriff and Eric Flowers because those are athletic guards. And with Scott Turner's offense, you need athletic guards that can be able to get out of space, open holes with outside runs and screens and stuff of that nature. And we couldn't really do that. Every time we tried to run a running back uh, a screen or something, you know, it got blown up because our guards weren't out there fast enough to, you know, get to the second level and, and to block for the per- for the receiver or for the running back receiving the screen. And then on the outside runs every single time, even though even in the short yardage, you know, downs when we ran outside, you know, runs, even when I don't think we should have Scott Turner being dumb and he should have ran up the middle. Even on the outside runs, you we weren't getting no type of no type of uh, blocking, no type of um, creases or holes opening up. We were very it was very lackluster year for the for um, Andrew Norwell. He just looks slow, old. And he doesn't look right. Okay. He had a very, very bad year. And I really thought he was going to come in. And, you know, I was buying so heavily into, you know, uh, John Masco. He he can, he can do, he can, he can, you know, get anybody right. You know, that was the mantra coming in. Like, yeah, Barry Sheriff and Eric Flowers are big losses, but John Masco does such a good job, such a great job with the line. He'll come in and fit right in, and it won't be that much of a, a, a decline. That's what was my that was my uh, thought process coming into the season. Boy, was I wrong because Andrew Norwell was not good. Um, he had his moments, but overall, not good. And we definitely need to upgrade the guard position this offseason. Next player that disappointed me this year um, was Charles Leno. Charles Leno was a guy that disappointed me this year and i'm gonna start by saying this no i did not i don't expect charles leno to be trent williams or to be um you know laramie tonsil or just the better left tackles in the league i don't expect him to be up there but what i do expect charles leno to do is be better than what he was yes as far as health wise he was out there but he was getting killed this season i mean whether it was Kayvon thibodeau whoever he was gonna be because he just looked slow and he was just getting beat. Charles Leno was not good this year. Um, and we honestly probably need to look to upgrading the left tackle position because Charles Leno, he's average, and you can get by with Charles Leno. But it, it's times where, like in the Giants game, you will wish you would still had a Trent Williams or you had a franchise left tackle because, yeah, obviously you're on you're in the goal line, you're near you're, you're inside your own five. I'm talking about the Taylor Heineke strip sag versus the Giants. You're inside your own five. So Taylor Heineke has to know to get the ball out quicker than that. But as soon as he hikes the ball, his left tackle is getting worked. He gets stripped from, from behind his blind side and fumble uh, recovery for a touchdown. Um, that's all on Charles Leno. He got worked. Okay. And he he, he did not have a good year. Um, what, if Charles Leno is back next year, am I going to be disappointed? Not really. Like, he's not the worst Okay, but I definitely think we should that we should look to upgrade that position and possibly try to find a left tackle of the future. If we don't get a quarterback in the first round, um, I definitely would not be mad if we spent the first round, 16th overall pick on a left tackle. Not at all. Um, because I that we desperately need one. We we haven't had a stable left tackle since you know Trent Williams. I mean, obviously. Leno has been stable as far as health wise, but I'm talking about not worrying about that left side. We miss Trent Williams dearly when it comes to that. But Charles Leno, he was healthy. He was out there for the majority of the season, um, but he was not that good, in my opinion. Next player that I have um, that was not that good this year for me, um, I think I want to say 
uh, it was another lineman. I want to say it was Sam Cosby um, because I thought Sam Cosby was going to have a big leap in year two. He had a phenomenal year one. And part of it really was not just his on-field performance. He just wasn't on the field much. And they kind of had this rotation of where it was Hill, that Leno, and, uh, and and Cornelius Lucas. They never really, you know, they never really stuck with one. You know, they kind of ran um, a revolving door at the right tackle position all year long. And they really didn't give uh, West or not West Schweitzer. Uh, they didn't really give Sam Cosby a chance to go out there and play all 17 games. But, again, he was hurt for some of the games. And the way he was out there, he was not the best. I think Cornelius Lucas had a better year than Sam Cosby. So he definitely disappointed me this year. I hope he can be better in year three. I hope he's more healthier year three. I think when Sam Cosby is healthy, we have a franchise right tackle. We have a guy that could be the future of the right tackle position, but he just did not do He just did, was not healthy this year. And you need that uh, at your tackle's position. We're so blessed to have Cornelius Lucas because he definitely could be starting on someone else's roster right now. But the fact that we have him backing up Cosby or Cosby backing up uh, 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 or Lucas, however you want to look at it, we're so blessed to have those two. But Cosby definitely disappointed me this year. Considering the fact that the year one he had, I'm thinking, hey, man, we got ourselves a stud. And we very well still could, but he got to be healthy next year. So I'm definitely intrigued to see what he looks like in year three, and he has to be better. And then number one, the obvious number one choice is Carson Wentz. He was the guy that disappointed me the most. Um, you guys know going back to the trade, I, I had mixed feelings about it. At first I was like, no, not Carson Wentz. But then looking back on it, I mean, but then after letting it sit for a while, I'm like, man, he, he wasn't that bad in Indianapolis. We have way more talent uh, and then Indianapolis. He might actually be good, okay? But boy, were we wrong. The guy stunk. He was so bad for us, man. Um, and I definitely think the coaching staff failed him for the first half of the season. Uh, but also, I just feel like Wentz just wasn't good himself. Decision making, uh, especially in that Browns game when he when he got the start, he was not good this year, and it sucks even more because he we still owe him twenty eight million dollars. Uh, the guy basically robbed us uh, of money, but it was all wrong. Okay, wrong. He said, I'm the one that watched the film. I'm the one that made the decision to go get Carson. So I can't really fault Carson Wentz for for, for, put, for being in this predicament. I got to put it on Ron. But at the same time, Wentz got to go out there and perform. He didn't do that. He was horrible. And I don't expect him to be back next year. Um, we'll cut him, I'm pretty sure, here shortly. Uh, and he'll take his $28 million and go off in the sunset, man. Carson went stuck this year. I mean, a guy in the Browns game making terrible decisions. I mean, throwing it up into double coverage for two picks. And then you had a on your first uh, pass play, you had a pick to turn when you're trying to uh, throw to Terry McCorn when he was never open. Carson Wentz was horrible, had no mobility, taking sacks, okay, he was not good at all. Missing guys in the flats where it's like easy throws he made in his pastime. He can't do it anymore. Wentz was bad. And then he got he also got hurt this year. So we got the terrible Carson Wentz experience, man. Uh, but what's new here in Washington uh, when it comes to trying to get veteran quarterbacks, right? But those are my five players. Um, no defensive players, really, um, because honestly, like, there was no defensive players that this year that disappointed me. Uh, defense was pretty good. Um, but those are my five guys. Let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section down below. What are some what are five players that disappointed you in this year's season? As always, it's Ben Boy Wan Gotti. Leave your uh, like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and leave your comments down below. We're on the road to 6,000 subscribers, so please help me get there as soon as possible. I'm out. Pay. Oh, cost me one time, that's gonna get you popped Get you popped, uh -huh. get you dropped uh -huh. Slide on the one way that get you locked on uh -huh. I ain't stopping till I get me an automobile